As we begin tonight's worship, I want you to take a deep breath. Relax your body as best as you can and pause. Pause from your chaotic world for these minutes with us to focus on the promise of Jesus. Tonight we are going to create a space to pray for our country and world. If you have a candle near, we invite you to have that ready to be lit later in worship. And if you have specific prayers or concerns, please type them in the comments on Facebook, and we will pray for them out loud later as we light a candle for you. In the year 740 BC, a violent organized and ruthless empire arrived in Israel. For 20 years, the great Assyrian Empire plowed their way through the Israel Kingdom, destroying and burning villages, torturing and killing resistors, and forcing people from their homes. Finally, in 721 BC, the capital of Israel, Samaria, fell to the Assyrian Empire. Men and women were ripped from their land and sent east to the farthest reaches of the Assyrian Empire. The Assyrians placed hooks in their nose and bits in their mouth and marched them like cattle hundreds of miles away to a foreign land surrounded by foreign people and foreign gods. The Assyrians did this strategically and systematically to everyone who stood in their way. Some scholars estimate that nearly four million people were forcibly relocated over the course of 250 years. Most never returned. Ancient Israel never forgot the devastation wrought by the Assyrian Empire, the loss of life, the loss of connection, the loss of memory. For centuries, Jewish people wondered about those lost tribes of Israel in Assyria. Were they still alive? Would they ever come home? Do they even remember who they are? Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, stood as a symbol of the bloodshed the corruption and the violence of the regime. Nineveh, like a swear word in the tongues of ancient Israel, stood for everything they feared and hated. So perhaps it is no wonder Jonah ran the other way when God said go to Nineveh. Jonah is one of the most unique stories in the Bible. The heroes of the story are nearly everyone in the story, from the fishermen to a whale, to an entire ancient city. All of them obey and trust in God's work, but not Jonah. Jonah, the only Jewish character in the story, is remembered as a whining and faithless and reluctant messenger who cannot stand that God has mercy on his enemy. Why is this story remembered? Why did the ancient Jews continue to pass along a tale that made the Jew look so bad? Well, I think it's to answer three questions. Can we ever forgive the people we hate? Does God's mercy even extend to them? Is there any hope that our division can be healed? On this election week, in a country as divided as any can remember, perhaps we too are called to answer these same questions. Can we forgive the people we hate? Can God's mercy even extend to them? Is there any hope that our division can be healed? We begin tonight's worship service by reading the story of Jonah. We'll do it as a skit. 
And Jonah is sort of a fun story, even though that introduction was pretty serious. <laughs> now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Go at once to Nineveh, the great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the ship and had lain down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, What are you doing sound asleep? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought so that we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, Come, let us cast lots so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. They said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? I'm a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you, that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. <laughs> oh, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done it as pleased you. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock, shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God, as shall, and shall turn from the evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger, so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was a very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is this not what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew you were a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. 
And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it to come over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush. So it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? Yes, angry enough to die. You are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? we will be entering a time of confession that is much needed in this crazy week. God, we confess that we have made you a very distant piece of our lives this week. As we stare at the news, when we wake in the morning, as we catch updates while at work, as we are glued to media in the evening, we are putting our trust in news stations, state leaders, 
and political candidates, everyone else but you. Who have we been loving, God? We We have have not not been been loving loving you, God. God. We We love love our party and and our candidates. We have said, seen, and shared horrible quotes, memes, lies, and posts sent for the purpose of division on social media pages, text messages, and face-to-face. We are being careless as we believe our opinion is the right opinion, and we are not listening to to or caring for others. Who have we been loving, God? We We have have not been been loving our neighbors, God. God. We We love love ourselves ourselves and our our interests. We are believing and sharing the lies that if the other political candidate wins, this means grave danger for us and for our family. We worship our candidate and our party. We think America will be better with and because of our politician. Who have we been loving, God? We We have have not not been been loving loving our country, country, God. God. We We love love division. division. We are obsessed with results and answers. We're not sleeping well, eating well, or taking care of ourselves or our families until we see who our president is. We are watching ourselves and our relationships deteriorate this week. Who have we been loving, God? We We have have not not been been loving loving ourselves, ourselves, God. We We love love false false answers. answers. We are reminded that we love our party, our candidates, our interests, and answers in our favor. We are reminded that this week and our beliefs have become a danger to ourselves, our communities, and our country from the divisions we are creating. But God, redeeming God, you remind us that we cannot put our trust solely in these people and things. As we are hearing constant promises from people in red or blue, our true trust comes from the God of promises. God who promises the Israelites freedom. God who promises Jonah great change. Who promises the birth of Jesus to give hope to all. This is where we will keep our hope. Amen. Amen.
those who serve in need of the broken and the been in conflict with someone whom you love? Anybody? Anybody? Uh (laughs) Never. (laughs) Perhaps a parent, a sibling, a partner, or a spouse. Has the conflict ever grown so conflicting that you go to separate places in your home, hold on to your side of the argument, and refuse to speak to each other? The silence is thick. And then, have you ever called or texted someone else and told them your side of the conflict, painting the picture that, of course, the fault lies not with you, but with the other side? The entire conflict, or at least most of it, can be blamed on the other person, so you say. Conflict like that does not get resolved until one person, one side, in the conflict feels some bit of empathy for the other side. It occurs to me that our 50-50 divide in the United States might not be much different from, from a very angry conflict between two people who love each other very much. You may not love the other side. In fact, you, like Jonah, may hate it. And if you do, you cannot be part of the healing. You cannot resolve conflict if you are set on hate. Just ask Jonah. If you are sure you are right, it doesn't work. If you have no empathy for the other side. In this moment in the United States, we invite you to see the humanity in the other side and pray for healing. Pray for healing not only for this nation in which we live, but for every nation in which all people live. We'll name in this next song many nations, and among the many names of nations in the world, Please pray with words that you can use tonight and all the time. Your words are, peace be yours. You are welcome to share any prayers that you have for your life, your community, your country, or this world. On Facebook, type them in the comments, and a little bit later, we will pray those out loud. As Caitlin lights candles for each of your prayers. Thank you. 
Taiwan and China, Japan and Hong Kong, North and South Korea, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, Philippines, Australia, Papua New Guinea, Iraq and Iran. Palestine and Israel, Afghanistan, Jordan, Syria and Turkey, for the healing of the nations, we praise you, O God, for the healing of the nations, we praise you, O God.
We have a couple prayer requests sent in from our viewers. One of them being, Lord, bring peace and tranquility to our divided nation. Another prayer of peace and healing to our hospitals. Like to pray for countries do do not have the privilege of a free voice and people who do not have a vote. I'll send out a prayer to those of those people working diligently and hard in the um, vote counting states. Um, I know that there's a lot of hassle that they have to deal with in these times. prayer for all newly elected officials. A prayer for us as we talk about the election that our words might speak the best of our neighbors. And a prayer for all those people that are new to democracy and are new to the hard work of elections, and especially to those who worked really hard on a losing campaign, that their fire for democracy and for the better future of the United States would continue to burn in their hearts. There's also a prayer for our clergy and spiritual leaders who continue to guide us through these times. Do the chorus one more time. us pray. Lord God, whatever the space we are in right now that is church, may the holy meal be an assurance of all the saints who join us, saints from every time and place, that this meal is a foretaste of the one we will all one day share. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. you are worshiping with someone else, I invite you to share the meal with one another. If you are worshiping alone, these words are for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Sing together one more song tonight. It's an old camp favorite for a lot of you out there. It seems especially important to remember in these divided times that no one is an island. I invite you to be still, relax your body, close your eyes, and take a deep breath. This blessing is for you, you with all your worries, your fears, and wonderings in this time. Know that you are loved and you are cared for. Please repeat after me. May I feel safe. May I feel safe. May I feel patient. May I feel patient. May I feel content. May I feel content. May I live with ease. May I live with ease. Think of someone whom you love very much. 
a parent, partner, sibling, or spouse. Consider their worries or fears and wonderings on this night. May you feel safe. May you feel safe. May you feel patient. May you feel patient. May you feel content. May you feel content. And may you live with ease. May you live with ease. Now think of someone in your community who is a familiar face. Person that makes your coffee. Someone you often see at the school or grocery store. May you feel safe. May you feel safe. May you feel patient. May you feel patient. May you feel content. May you feel content. And may you live with ease. And may you live with ease. Think past the people whom you recognize, past the familiar people, to the unfamiliar strangers near and far in this country, to people with lives just like you, who want safety and contentment, who want to feel strong and live with ease, who share the same wishes and hopes and dreams that we have as human beings. May they feel safe. May, May they, they feel, feel safe. safe. May they feel patient. May, May they, they feel, feel patient. patient. May they feel content. May, May they, they feel, feel content. content. And may they live with ease. May, May they live with ease. May all of us everywhere feel safe and content and strong and live with ease. Amen. Amen. Amen.